thank you for saving me. Hey, how you doing guys? Today, Don't Miss Your Moment continues to meet its objective by reaching the masses through multimedia. Do you remember the song, Seeking the Loss? Well, the next message is just that. We pray that you are compelled to share this video and share the good news with someone. And with that, I introduce to you, Brother Flores. My name is Henry Flores. Uh, I was born in Cuba. I lived in Miami most of my life. I uh, became uh, a baker when I was a young man because my father got sick. Uh, when I was 19, I was sick and I was uh, had hepatitis. Uh, and the doctors wanted me to rest. So I rested for about a month. And I told myself that if I ever get an opportunity to make money without having to work so hard, that I would take it. Unfortunately, the devil is always listening to us when we say things that we shouldn't say. And he doesn't miss his time. When it's the right time, he jumps on us and tries to destroy us. And that's what happened. Uh, this man called me and asked me if I wanted to work for him. I asked him how much uh, it he paid and he said it would be about $4,000 a month. A week actually would be more a month. And uh, I asked him what I had to do and he told me he would explain. But the truth is that I was working for uh, the, the mafia that uh, brought in drugs from Colombia. I did that for three years and then decided that's not what I wanted. Uh, I, I didn't want to do that kind of job and I told my boss, that I wanted to retire uh, and start a, a regular job. Quit. What he understood was that I wanted to become a snitch. So he told me, sure, no problem. And two weeks later, he calls me up and tells me that he has a, a bad merchandise that he couldn't sell uh, in Miami. And if I would take it up north for him, it would be the last time that he would bother me. Then I can continue with my plans of starting a business and working. So I told him this, this would be the last time and that I would do it for him because of our friendship. Uh, when I went to pick it up, the man told me that the money was in the back room. It was a single white uh, mobile home. And we walked down the hall to his room. And his room had a dresser on the right side and he put his hand on the dresser and there was a lot of clothing piled up on top. Then all of a sudden, he pulls out a 38 caliber revolver and shoots me in the face. I blocked it with my arm and it went through my uh, upper arm and destroyed the bone and the muscle there. And then he shot me again when the smoke cleared and I blocked it with my left arm. And then he realized that he thought he wasn't hitting my face or he wasn't hitting me. So he shot at my uh, stomach and shot me through the, through the belly, then he shot me through the right leg, and then as I was falling, he shot me again through the side, which severed my spinal cord. And I was laying in a puddle of, of blood and bodily fluid, and I looked up at him, and he was loading his gun because he ran out of bullets. His revolver was a five-shooter, and he only needed one more shot. So I looked up at him, I wasn't a Christian. I had very little to do with God. And I looked at him, and I didn't want to go to hell hating the man. So I told him, uh, I forgive you for killing me. And when I said that, he couldn't reload his gun. He started shaking really bad. When he did that, uh, uh, he left running, dropped all the shells on my face, and left running, and I didn't see him again. Uh, 
my, I had two friends that were outside and they heard the commotion. By the time they came in, uh, I asked them to tell me where I was bleeding. And they told me it was everywhere and uh, that I was probably going to die. So I told them to take me outside and they took me outside and uh, I, they left after they took me outside. And I, I started asking, uh, talking to God, trying to con God, trying to tell him I'm a nice guy, I'm not a bad person. And, and I realized what I was doing, what my mouth was saying, and, and I stopped it and I said to myself, you're the last few minutes of life and you're trying to con God. And, and we, we sometimes miss our moment because we're trying to con God or we're trying to con ourselves, to lie to ourselves that everything is going to be all right or, or whatever. And at that time, I didn't think that I needed to be uh, lying to God. So I told him, I said, I, I, don't, I don't deserve to say your name with my mouth and I don't deserve to ask you for anything. I don't want to die. I don't want to go to hell. And I don't want my mother to uh, to be stressed and to be uh, miserable when somebody calls her on the phone and tell her that uh, they found me shot to death. So I closed my eyes after saying that and waited to die. When I would open them and open them every few seconds, every few minutes, it seems like an eternity. Finally, an hour and a half later, a policeman happens to drive by and hears, uh, sees the lights from the building uh, and stops to investigate. I told him that, that I wanted to live. And I, I told him, I, I threatened him. I don't think he, he was scared, but I told him that if he didn't take me to a, a hospital that could help me, that I was gonna hunt him and his family and his dog and his cat and everything in his household. Uh, I don't think it scared him, but it showed him that I really wanted to live. So he uh, hurried the ambulance crew and took me to the next hospital, which was at a university that had a trauma unit. They called my mother and they called my brother and told them that I was dying, that more than likely I would be dead by the time they get there. But they were going to try their best to do something for me. Uh, and they were going to put me in the operating room uh, and try to operate. Hey guys, just want to remind you to subscribe to my sister networks, PKT Max, Minute Parables 2.0, Humble is the Way, and the Church TV Network. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share their videos also. Alright, talk to you soon.